It's been while. It's been while. Hey there everyone, it's Aish here, back again with another video and let's get started with some news stuff here. So now recently, one of the package has made quite a lot of news. Now Python can run in the browser. Now surprisingly, this is not something new, but it's getting a lot of attention and I'm all happy about it. Now we have already packages of the Python like TensorFlow.js, which were made initially for Python and running in the Python environment, but they're running absolutely fine in the JavaScript environment as well. Now there is a little bit of a breakthrough which nobody is getting the attention there. It's not important that Python code is able to run in the browser itself. The important point is how it was achieved. Yes, I'm talking about the PyScript project by the team Anaconda. Now they have done something remarkable and something amazing and I'm not excited about that you can run Python code in the browser. I'm excited about what are the future possibilities of this kind of mechanism that will open up really great amount of doors for all of us. So let me walk you through with the points that how to enable and how to run your Python code in an HTML web page and what you have missed in the documentation. Let's go ahead and start together. Okay, so important stuff. First First, let's do a quick practical so that you can see how this can be done, what are the issues and what I are missing into the environment up here. So simply just go ahead, open up a folder in the VS code and I'm going to go ahead and simply run an index.html. Nothing new, nothing fancy in that. We're going to simply enter a simple uh, boilerplate code up here. Let's go ahead and change this one to something like uh, Python code. Looks good. Now let's go ahead and move on to the browser to see that how this is going all in. So this is the PyScript.net, the homepage, the web page where the entire project is lying and how you can run your Python code into the web browser. It's pretty simple. They just say, hey, you have to just include the PyScript and write your Python code in that. Of course, there's a little bit need of a configuration here so you can install it and really nice message up here that, hey, just kidding. You need to include these two links and that's pretty much it. So let me go ahead and copy this, move into our browser and environment. So let me go ahead and move into the VS code. And there we go. So all I'm going to do is in the head part, because obviously once the head is loaded, the rest of the body is going to be loaded. And that's where the code is going to execute it. So we need this one to be in the head. That's most ideal case. But yes, there are a lot of other ways of handling this situation. Now moving it up further back. And this is all you got to do is simply take this one and anywhere in the HTML, you can go ahead and run this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the body. And there we go. Now this is all it's needed and you can run the Python code. There are some caveats as well. I'll of course walk you through with that. Right click and open with the live server and uh, it's going to take some time and now you can actually is printed. Nothing fancy, you can print your name and stuff as well, but let's go ahead and do something a little bit more fancy and walk you through some of the caveats as well. So obviously I would love to have some of the scripts. So I'm going to say my pi code dot py and let's write some of the very basic Python code in here. One of the most basic one is to simply have a list. So let's go ahead and have a list and let's call this one as simply uh, 15437 some numbers basically. And let's go ahead and loop through these numbers. So let's go ahead and do that for num in list. Let's go ahead and simply print these out. So I'm going to go ahead and say print and let's go ahead and print these num. Yep, nothing fancy, really, really basic one. Now let's see that how we can actually run this entire code into an uh, index HTML file because obviously it is allowing you to write all of this code in here, but I don't think anybody is going to do and write all of the code into an HTML file. That's not feasible as well. That's not why is it wise also. So we can go ahead and simply add a source up here just like that. And once we have this, let's go ahead and say, I want to include this MyPy and now I don't need this code to run. I can go ahead and save this one. I can go back up here. Obviously this is going to take some time, but you can see all the numbers are up here. Now one of the caveats that you're going to see is if you're writing all of this code up here, which is not advisable at all. If you go ahead and hit enter up here, this is all, all it is. Let me go ahead and just copy and paste this code into the index.html. I come up here, I paste this and that's it. If I go ahead and do this, this is going to throw me up an error and I should save this. Yep. Obviously this is going to throw up some of the errors. 
uh, not right now, but yeah, this is not a right way of doing the things. Let me show you why this is not throwing the errors and stuff. Uh, let me go back and let's move it up here. So obviously this is Python code, need to be indented properly. And there we go. Now it should be technically throwing some error. Yeah, it is. The reason for that is uh, again, classic Python indentation. This needs to be indented very properly and indenting the things into an HTML file, not really advisable. I would not ever, ever recommend it to you. Now this is very basic, uh, but what you are missing up is what they have actually mentioned in the documentation. So now together we are going to go ahead and try to learn uh, how to read the documentation. Now this entire thing that you are able to run Python code and not only that, you are having a support of any Python library, matplotlib, numpy, you can just ask them that that should be loaded as well and you can run that. That is all possible because of this Pyodide. Now Pyodide is a port of C Python to WebAssembly. Now the reason why we are having a kind of a decent amount of speed of running the Python script into it is because of this WebAssembly. And if you read up here, the, the point which excites me a lot is not just the Python. Look at the, what they are saying. Let's read it together. That developed by the team of Anaconda, all these great people, uh, he mentioned in the talk that this is like interleaving Python and HTML. This is almost like PHP. So the whole idea behind that is now eventually in the future, you can add support for more of these languages that can run directly from the HTML. That is something amazing. The amount of creativity that is going to come in. Imagine the Java is able to run directly in the HTML. Imagine the Ruby is directly able to run into this without any frameworks and amount of frameworks that are going to come into that. That is something remarkable. Uh, one more thing that a lot of people might have missed is this diagram, which gives you a JavaScript bridge for all of that, just like how the React Native is doing into the mobile app. Now they are doing it into up here. So again, it's time really good that the WebAssembly is taking the web with absolute storm. And this is something really amazing. Now, just to give you a brief idea more onto the PyScript, PyScript actually is divided into three parts that how it runs and execute this code. The first one is PyENV, which defines the Python environment kind of what packages you need. The second one is the PyScript where you actually imagine uh, I just showed you up here. So this is the PyScript where actually your code is loaded. And the final one is PyRepel, which is a read eval print loop, basically the responsible guy who prints up all the things on the web page. So this is the simple environment. And you can have this Py environment just like this. And uh, this Py env needs to go up here. So after the head, now we have this another guy, which is Py dash env just like that. And you can mention all of the list up here, just like it is here. So you can have NumPy's, Pandas, all of your favorite libraries can be injected up here. There are lots of great examples as well, but I'm pretty sure you can just go ahead and look into these examples. I myself dived into some of them, not all of them, but yeah, it's really, really good. And what I'm really, really impressed about this one is the approach, this Pyodide. I highly, highly recommend all of you to go through with this. This is such an amazing way of doing this. This is something which is a groundbreaking which is going to break through and unleash a lot of creative doors. So this was a quick update. And yes, I'll start throwing a lot of videos. Hit that subscribe and I'm going to catch you up in the next video.